The topic I'm going to discuss in this lecture is acute bacterial conjunctivitis. I'm going to cover diagnosis, treatment, and giant phonics in group. Acute bacterial conjunctivitis is a common and usually self-limiting condition caused by direct contact with infected secretions. The most common isolates are Streptococcus pneumoniae, Staphylococcus aureus, H. influenzae, and Moraxella catarabis. A minority of severe cases are caused by the sexually transmitted organism, Neisseria gonorrhea, which can readily invade the intact corneal epithelium. Meningococcal uh, Neisseria meningitidis conjunctivitis is rare and usually affects children. Diagnosis is based on symptoms, signs, and investigations. Symptoms can, uh, include acute onset of redness, grittiness, burning, and discharge. Involvement is usually bilateral, although one eye may become affected in one to two days before the other. On waking, the eyelids are frequently stuck together and may be difficult to open. Uh, systemic symptoms may occur in patients with severe conjunctivitis associated with gonococcus, meningococcus, chlamydia, and H. influenzae. In children, the possibility of progression to systemic involvement should always be borne in mind. Signs are variable and depend on severity of infection. The visions uh, in both eyes is, uh, is usually normal. Eyelid edema and erythema may occur in severe infection, particularly gonococcal, as it is seen in the first picture. You can see that both lids are swollen here, and it is marked erythema. Conjunctival injection as uh, is a marked in bacterial conjunctivitis, and it is uh, away from the limbus, limbus as compared to ciliary injection, which surrounds the limbus. Uh, the discharge can initially be watery, mimicking viral conjunctivitis, but rapidly become mucoparillant, as it is seen in the figure here. This is the mucoparillant uh, discharge in the inferior cornex. Uh, now, hyperacute uh, purulent discharge uh, is uh, significant of gonococcal or meningococcal conjunctivitis as it is seen in the figure here. Marked hyperacute purulent discharge is seen here and superficial punctate uh, epithelial erosions on cornea are common. Peripheral corneal ulceration may occur in gonococcal and meningococcal infections and may rapidly progress to perforation. Lymphadenopathy is usually absent except in severe gonococcal and meningococcal infections. Uh, moving on to investigations are not performed routinely but may be indicated in certain situations, for example, in severe cases, binocular conjunctival swabs and scrapings uh, are taken for urgent uh, gram staining to exclude gonococcal and meningococcal infection which are usually gram-negative, kidney-shaped, uh, intracellular diplococci. Culture should include enriched media such as chocolate agar or Thea Martin for gonorrhea. Polymerase chain reaction may be required for less severe cases that fail to respond to treatment, particularly to rule out the possibility of chlamydial and viral infection. Uh, Uh, for treatment, about 60% uh, of cases resolve within 5 days without treatment. Uh, topical antibiotics usually for uh, uh, four, day, 4 times daily for up to a week, but sometimes more intensively are frequently administered to speed up recovery and prevent reinfection. Uh, and transmission, there is no evidence that any particular antibiotic is more effective. Ointments and gel provide a higher concentration for longer periods than drops, but should be avoided during the day because blurred vision may follow. Uh, the, the antibiotics available are uh, 
chlorine phenethyl, amino glycosides like gentamicin, neomycin, and tobramycin, uh, quinolones like ciprofloxacin, ufloxacin, levofloxacin, lomifloxacin, gtfloxacin, moxifloxacin, and uh, basifloxacin. Uh, macrolides are erythromycin and azithromycin. Others include polymyxin B, physidic acid, and bisetrocin. Uh, some pr practitioners, particularly in the USA, believe that chloramphenicol should not be used for routine treatment because of possible link with aplastic anemia. Gonococcal and meningococcal conjunctivitis should be treated with quinolones, gentamicin, chloramphenicol, or bisetrocin 1 to 2 hourly, as well as systemic therapy. Now, systemic antibiotics are required in the following circumstances. Number one is gonococcal infection, which is usually treated with the third generation cephalosporin, such as cetraxone, quinolones, and some macrolides are alternatives. It is essential to seek advice from a microbiologist or a genitourinary uh, specialist. Age influenza infection, particularly in children, is treated with oral amoxicillin with clavulanic acid. There is 25% risk of developing otitis and other systemic problems. Uh, meningococcal conjunctivitis, particularly in children in whom early systemic prophylaxis may be life-saving, as up to 30% may develop systemic disease without treatment. The advice of pediatric and infectious disease specialist must be sought. But if in doubt, treatment with intramuscular benzyl penicillin ceftriaxone or cefotaxime or oral ciprofloxacin should not be delayed. Preceptal or orbital cellulitis should be treated as the guidelines are instructed. Other drugs that should be used uh, or can be used are topical steroids which may reduce scarring in membranous or pseudomembranous conjunctivitis. Irrigation to remove excessive discharge may, may be useful in hyperacute cases, uh, like in cases of hyperprevalent uh, gonococcal cases. Uh, contact lens wear should be discontinued until at least 48 hours after complete resolution of symptoms. Contact lenses should not be worn while uh, topical antibiotic treatment continues. Risk of transmission should be reduced uh, by hand washing and the avoidance of towel sharing. Uh, review is unnecessary. Uh, for most mild to moderate adult cases, although patients should be cautioned to seek further advice in the event of deterioration, statutory notification of public health authorities may be required locally for some cases. Now, giant phonic syndrome uh, is an uncommon entity causing chronic relapsing pseudomembranous purulent conjunctivitis. Uh, it is believed to be due to retained debris in a voluminous upper fornix acting as a focus for persistent bacterial colonization, usually step aureus, in an elderly patient with levator dis disinsertion. Large protein aggregations may be visualized in the upper fornix though double eversion may, uh, with a retractor may be necessary to identify these. Secondary corneal vascularization and lacrimal obstruction are common. It is frequently unilateral. Treatment involves repeated sweeping of the fornix with a cotton-tipped applicator and topical and systemic antibiotics. Intensive topical steroid may be helpful. Uh, surgical reconstruction of the fornix may be necessary in recalcitrant cases. So that's uh, it for the uh, uh, bacterial conjunctivitis and uh, giant chronic syndrome. Uh, if you like the lecture, please press on the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all.